Hey everyone, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. I'm gonna do a little bit with a PSL 54C today. I'm gonna do a install of a recoil buffer on the recoil spring on the inside. And this is a standard recoil buffer that works for all AK-47s. Uh, it also, I believe, works for Segas. So as long as it's got that recoil spring like any other AK variant, this should work on it. And what this does is it prevents the uh, bolt from traveling all the way to the rearward of the position of your receiver and smacking into the back of your trunnion. Uh, this, this, this buffer will actually prevent that. This is just a $10 piece of plastic that you can buy at many different manufacturers, uh, many different distributors. Uh, but what you want to watch for is the ones that don't have a whole lot um, taken out of the plastic itself. So make sure it's a nice meaty one. Uh, the more plastic you have there, the better the, the buffer it's going to be, the more it's going to withstand the longer it's going to last. These things do break down over time, uh, will break, etc. So kind of keep your eyes open for that as well if you install one of these. Uh, but for over, over gassed guns such as the PSL, uh, there's a lot more gas that cycles this gun that's actually needed uh, and it's known for having issues in the back of the rear trunnion uh, breaking apart, cracking, fracturing, that kind of thing especially if you use heavy ball ammunition anything really with uh, 160 grains or more uh, I tend to stick with a 148 grain bullet that seems to work very well with this gun uh, I don't seem to have any issues with it so uh, but you know the install on these definitely works well uh, they're simple enough to do and for ten dollars you, you can easily replace them I'm gonna pick up a few more for my other AKs I do use this currently on my Draco C pistol AK pistol it works phenomenal to tame that recoil and even a little bit of that uh, muzzle climb I think when you have uh, less recoil like that it definitely helps so um, just to give you an idea here if you're not familiar with the PSL 54C it is known as a few different things depending on the person who imported or the company that imported it. Uh, this particular variant here was imported by TGI and is no, actually known as the uh, FPK Druganoff. It is the same exact gun as the PSL 54C or the SSG 97 or the Roll Mac 3. Again, it just comes down to who imported it. And uh, you're probably familiar with the 762 by 39 cartridge. That is what uh, standard AK-47 shoot. This particular AK-47 variant actually shoots the 762 by 54R, which is more commonly known for the Mosin Nagant. So a much larger Russian round than uh, the standard AK-47s that you'll find. Uh, due to that, this gun is much larger. You'll notice that uh, it has a larger receiver, it has a longer barrel, the gas system is longer, the trigger guard is, is bigger. I mean, everything on this gun is bigger. It does have an aftermarket Rhineland Arms PSL stock on it. Um, but if you're interested in further details on this gun, I do have other uh, videos out there on my channel regarding it, so feel free to jump out there and check it out. Uh, I do have, especially have one gun of, uh, video out there of me rapid firing this gun to give you an idea of kind of the recoil and what it's capable of doing. So jump out there and check that out if you're interested. Uh, it does come standard with a 10 round box detachable magazine. Uh, these are Romanian just like the uh, rifle itself. Um, they uh, come stock generally with just one of them. I was fortunate enough to get uh, four additional ones uh, prior to the prices of them skyrocketing. I purchased them for $50 a piece. Now I'm seeing them listed on Gunbroker for $100 a piece, which is just ridiculous. It, there's really no reason why it should be that expensive. It's just really more or less price gouging. And, um, but you know, consuming, uh, supply and demand will definitely do that to prices. Um, just to make one real quick note, I do have these um, other magazines that I purchased. I was reading on a gun forum that um, I think they're trying to use Lottie magazines in this gun to you know, expand the capacity from 10 rounds to 20 rounds, which is what this is. But this is a Mag Celeranta LS26 light machine gun, 7.62x5.3 caliber, uh, but it is 20 round capacity and it's a detachable box magazine. The dimensions are not even I guess they're, they're somewhat similar, I guess I would say, but they will not work in this PSL unmodified. And I don't have the uh, fabrication skills nor the machines in order to modify this magazine to work. I've also heard that somebody was trying to load 7.62x54 in here and it was binding up after, uh, I think he said, 12 rounds. So uh, this 7.62x54 round is very difficult to do anything with past 10 rounds. Uh, we've, I've seen very few examples uh, on the gun forums and other places of that nature where they were successful in expanding the capacity of this magazine um, to do anything more with it. So, 
That was one side note. Uh, I did talk about in the forum that I would post a little bit of a video on that. Uh, I got some dimensions written down here. I'm not an engineer, guys, um, or you know, a schematic drawer or anything like that. But um, if you can actually see some of the dimensions there, you can pause the video here, record those down. I don't know if that will help you out or not, but uh, if it does, hooray. Uh, otherwise, we'll get right into installing this recoil buffer in this uh, designated marksman's rifle. Uh, it is not a sniper rifle. It's not known for doing anything really past a thousand yards. Uh, the, the general uh, range of this, this firearm is between 100 yards and, uh, you know, maximum seven 800 yards. But it is known to reach out there a little bit. Uh, it does have a, a thin barrel, so once it does heating up, the, the pattern will start uh, going all over the place. Uh, you won't have a very good, um, you know, repetitious um, target acquisition and things of that nature. So um, to install this recoil buffer, what we're going to do is remove the dust cover just like that, just like a standard AK. Remove the spring, and that's really as far as we need to go with it because we're going to be installing this recoil buffer on the spring. And again, as you, as you can imagine, uh, as that bolt is coming to the rear root of the position as it's cycling, uh, it's slamming the, the hard metal of the bolt carrier into the back of your receiver and rear trunnion. So what this does is it, it prevents it from hitting that metal on metal. It actually will you know, run into this buffer, which you know, is, is technically supposed to reduce the, the felt recoil on it, but ultimately prevent the damage from occurring to your, your rifle. Uh, to disassemble the recoil spring on the PSL, uh, what you'll notice is on the uh, top of the guide rod here, there is a uh, nut that has an opening, kind of like a crescent moon, if you will. And uh, the guide rod has kind of a detent on it, so when you depress the spring here, it'll relieve the, the tension on this nut on the end of the guide rod, and you'll actually be able to slide the nut right off the guide rod where those two detents are. And then once you have that, what you can do is allow the spring to go ahead and fully depress and you have two pieces of the guide rod that do come apart as you can see there and uh, you can put it back together just like that that's kind of how that works uh, typically with these when you're installing them at least on my Draco CAK47 I slid it up over the spring itself on this particular one because the diameter of the spring is much larger than a standard AK what I'm going to do is actually put this over um, the guide rod itself and keeping note of which way you're putting it on you do want kind of the flat edge there as you can see pointing towards the, where the bolt carrier is going to be hitting it so um, that the angled end would go towards where you you know put your finger to get the spring off and what I'm going to do is just kind of lightly slide it up over the end of here just so it's on there I'm not going to put a whole lot of pressure on it at this point but just something like that at, at this point um, getting the spring back on the guide rod is a little bit more difficult you do have to hold your guide rod pointing downward, therefore the uh, guide rod will stand to its uh, position that it needs to be in. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of put the spring up over the guide rod here. Uh, what I do is I put it against my chest and continue pointing it downwards and uh, slowly depress the spring or compress the spring until I'm able to see the end of that guide rod and replace this nut. Once you got the nut on there, just replace your spring over the nut in the correct position there just like that and now you have your reassembled guide rod spring recoil spring with the buffer on it now what you're going to do at that point is put it back in the PSL and we'll just slide it back in here it was a little bit more difficult because this buffer now is going to be in my way but actually it wasn't so bad once I have it in there you'll notice that there's still a space at least right now between the recoil buffer and the uh, rear of my receiver and the trunnion. So what I'm going to do is just slowly push this backwards until it's fully seated against the rear of the receiver and trunnion. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to tell because it should be able to fully seat against there. Now with this in position, I'll show you uh, what it's going to allow it to do is when I'm cycling or the firearm is cycling, that bolt carrier is coming back and now it's hitting that that recoil buffer, that plastic piece. It's not hitting the, the rear of the receiver and the trunnion metal on metal. So um, supposedly that should uh, help the recoil. It should also prevent the damage um, and ultimately save your firearm from a lot of hassle in the future and make it last a little bit longer. Uh, one thing you do want to make sure of is when you put anything like this on that your gun is going to function. 
Um, first, just with using some proving dummy rounds or snap caps, so we'll go ahead and try that. Uh, and then the second real test, we'll be bringing it to the range and, and, and making sure that it uh, fully functions as well. You don't want to just assume that it's going to work and make a date with all your buddies and go out and have not a, a rifle that doesn't work. So um, once you do have it in here, the best way to, I mean, once you once you function test it like this, your chances of it working are pretty darn good. You don't think you have to worry about it too much. But again, a range test is going to be needed in order to fully verify. Uh, the cycle uh, of this rifle has now been shortened a little bit, so that's something you want to look for is if the, if the um, proper fitting has been made, the cycle of the weapon should have enough travel to allow the uh, round to eject and cycle the next round. So we'll go ahead and try it. And it seems to be ejecting fine. So it uh, looks like we have a successful installation of the recoil buffer in the back of the spring here for the PSL. Again, you can use these really in any type of AK variant rifle uh, or pistol for that matter out there. So uh, these are a great little piece. Keep an eye on them, like I said, though, because they do break up over time, especially if you have a lot of varied temperatures, hot to cold, that kind of thing. Um, that might uh, make it not last as long as it normally would. but. Uh, overall, the one I have in my Draco CAK-47 has probably stood up to close to 700 rounds now. I do see some fracture lines in it, but it's still holding in there, so it's still working. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's a pretty easy, straightforward process. Hope this helps somebody out, but uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But as always, until next time, thanks for watching and take it easy.